In this lecture, you'll learn about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous replication and the implications of that in ONTAP. The diagram here shows the difference between synchronous and asynchronous replication. So starting with synchronous replication up at the top part of the diagram here. When the replication is synchronous, the source host sends a write request into the source storage system. That's the source of the replication. Then the source storage system sends a replication request, sends the write to the destination storage system. Then the target destination storage sends an acknowledgement back to the source storage, and then the source storage then sends the acknowledgement back to the client. So you can see that with synchronous replication, the data is written to both the source and the target storage before an acknowledgement is sent back to the client. So because of this, you can't have too much of a delay of the data being written to both locations. If it takes too long to write the data from the source to the target storage, and then the acknowledgement to come back from there, and then the acknowledgement to go back to the client again, well, if there's too much delay there, it's going to time out the application on the source host, and things are going to be broken. They're not going to work. So with synchronous replication, it means that you always have two copies of the most current data in both locations, but there is going to be a time and a distance limitation on whether this is going to work or not. Okay, next one that we have is the asynchronous replication below. When you use asynchronous replication, the source host sends in a write request to its source storage system, then the source storage system immediately sends an acknowledgement back to the client. Then after that, based on a predetermined schedule that you decide, for example, once every 10 minutes, the source storage sends all of the data that has been written to it in the previous 10 minutes to the target storage. The target storage then sends an acknowledgement back to the source storage system. So you can see that with the asynchronous replication, it breaks it down into two separate operations there. So with the synchronous, the write goes to both the source and the target storage before the acknowledgement comes back. With the asynchronous replication, the write comes into the source storage and it immediately sends the acknowledgement back to the client. Later on, on the schedule in a separate operation, the, all of the writes are going to be written to the target storage and the target storage will send an acknowledgement back for that. So, because with the asynchronous replication, the source storage sends an acknowledgement immediately back to the client host system, we don't have that time and distance limitation. We're not going to time out the application in the source because we're sending the acknowledgement back immediately. Now, there is like a little bit of a time and a distance limitation here depending on what your schedule is. For example, if you were trying to replicate every 30 seconds and this source storage system was in London and the target storage system was in Sydney and there was a lot of writes coming into the source storage system, obviously that just wouldn't work either. So you need to have some kind of reasonable schedule, reasonable delay between the source and the target storage system so that there's enough delay there that all of the data can be written to the target and the acknowledgement to come back before it's time to send data again. Obviously, every time that you design this kind of solution, you will have some kind of reasonable delay between the source and the target storage system so that it is not going to cause a problem. If you do have a reasonable delay there, it's perfectly feasible that the source storage system could be in London, the target storage system could be completely on the other side of the world in Sydney, and that will work just fine. You do then still have your data in the two different locations. You're just going to have a bit of a delay between it getting to the source system and getting to the target system. Whereas with the synchronous, there's no delay between the two. Okay, so that's the difference between the synchronous and the asynchronous replication. Looking at how this affects things in ONTAP. 
data protection mirror copies can be updated either synchronously or asynchronously. You choose when you set up the mirror relationship. Snap vault copies are always going to be asynchronous, which if you think about it, makes sense. With data protection mirror copies, we want to have two copies of the data, which we want to have really as current as possible because typically that's being used as a disaster recovery solution. So if the source side fails, if that site goes down for any reason, we can fail over to the disaster recovery site. We want to have the same copy of the data over there. Snap Vault is used for a different thing. Snap Vault is used for backups going back over time. So this is used that if data gets corrupted or if it gets accidentally deleted in the source side, we can back up from an earlier copy on the destination side. So with Snap Vault, there would be no reason to have the replication being synchronous because it's for backups going back in time previously, we're always going to be using asynchronous replication there. So looking at Snap Mirror Synchronous now, that is available from ONTAP 9.5. In previous versions of Cluster Data ONTAP, we did still have Snap Mirror, but only Asynchronous was supported. Synchronous has been available since 9.5. The way this works is that following an initial baseline transfer, writes from the clients are written to both volumes before an acknowledgement is sent back, as you saw in the first slide in this lecture. So if you do set up a SnapMirror relationship between a source and a destination volume, and when you set that up new, there's already data in the source volume, well, you need to replicate all that data across first to the destination volume, that's your initial baseline transfer. Once that has been done, any writes that come into the source volume are going to be immediately replicated over the destination volume before an acknowledgement is sent back to the client. With Snap Mirror Synchronous, as I explained earlier, we do have that time and distance limitation where if there's too much time and distance between the two sites, it's going to break the client applications. So Snap Mirror Synchronous is targeted for distances up to 150 kilometers with less than 10 milliseconds round trip time. The round trip time is the time it takes for packets to get from the source system to the destination system and an acknowledgement to come back again. So it's the two way traffic. ONTAP 9.5 supports Fiber Channel, iSCSI, and NFS version 3, and support for SMB 2 Plus, NFS version 4.0 and 4.1 was added in ONTAP 9.6. SnapMirror Synchronous is supported on all FAS and AFF platforms that have at least 16 gigabytes of memory and on all ONTAP select platforms. And the source and destination can be different ONTAP platforms. So you could replicate, for example, from an AFF system to an ONTAP select system. Each node in the source cluster must have a capacity-based SnapMirror Synchronous license in addition to the standard SnapMirror license. So if you're using just asynchronous SnapMirror, you just need the SnapMirror license. But if you're using synchronous, you need that and the SMS license as well. Async SnapMirror relationships can be converted to synchronous. So as you saw earlier, SnapMirror synchronous did come out comparatively recently. So if you had a system that was installed, say, when ONTAP 9.1 was out and you had SnapMirror asynchronous relationships set up then and you want to convert those to SnapMirror synchronous now, you can do that easily. SnapMirror synchronous does use the SnapMirror engine, which replicates at the volume level. So you can be replicating from multiple source to destination volumes. On the AFF, that supports up to 40 concurrent operations per node, FAS supports up to 20, and ONTAP Select supports up to 10. SnapMirror Synchronous has got two different modes, Sync and Strict Sync. And which one to use depends on which is more important to you. Do you always want to be able to write to the volume? even if the replication is possibly gone down, or do you want the DR site to always have a synchronized copy of the data for zero RPO? So those are the two options. Let's look first at sync. So we've snap made our synchronous with sync mode. If the write to the secondary storage does not complete, 
the application can continue writing to the primary storage, but replication is just not going to be happening while that is going on. So going back a slide, that would be if what is most important to you is always being able to write to the volume. With SnapMirror Sync, the recovery point objective is going to be zero under normal conditions and the RTO, the time to actually recover, can be very low. If a secondary replication failure does, however, occur, then the RPO and the RTO will become indeterminate. For the RTO, for the RPO, sorry, to be zero, that means that the data is being synchronously replicated. So that is going to be the case in normal conditions. But if the replication gets broken, then obviously the RPO is not going to be zero anymore because you're going to be writing to the source volume, but not to the destination volume while the replication is down. If the replication does go down, which is a rare event, should not be happening in normal operations, well, when the replication does become available again, the volumes will be automatically resynced without you needing to do anything. The other option we've got is strict sync. And this is used for the second option where you want to make sure that the DR site always has a synchronized copy of the data for zero RPO. So if writes are happening, it's guaranteed that the RPO is going to be zero. With strict sync, if the IO to the secondary storage fails, then the application IO fails with synchronous replication terminated, and that makes sure that the primary and the secondary volumes are identical. So you're guaranteed to have an RPO of zero if you use strict sync, but if the replication goes down, then you're not going to be able to write any new data until that is repaired. So looking at how asynchronous replication works now. So you saw that for the synchronous replication, the way that that works is we do an initial baseline transfer where we transfer all of the data from the source to the destination volume. And then after that, any writes that come into the source volume from a client are going to be replicated to the destination volume and an acknowledgement received back from there before the acknowledgement is sent back to the client. With asynchronous replication, that also does an initial baseline transfer, which works in exactly the same way. So a snap mirror snapshot copy is created of all data on the source volume. That snapshot copy and all the data blocks it references, and optionally any other non-snap mirror snapshots that you've taken, just normal snapshots that are in that source volume, will be transferred to the destination volume. After that, it is different though than the synchronous replication. So with asynchronous replication, after that initial baseline transfer, updates can be performed manually. So at any time that you want to, you can say, I want to do a replication now. They can also be done using an automated schedule. And most commonly, you're going to want to have an automated schedule, which is going to automatically replicate any changes on the time period that you choose. With the updates, a new snap mirror snapshot copy is taken and transferred to the destination. The current snap mirror snapshot copy, so the previous one, the one now is compared with the previous one, and then updated blocks are replicated from the source to the destination. So we do that initial baseline transfer where everything is transferred across, and then after that, it's only incremental updates, only the changes that are going to be replicated from the source to the destination. And with our snap mirror DP mirrors, on the source side, we're usually going to have one snap mirror snapshot there. On the destination side, we're going to have two snap mirror snapshots. We're going to have the current snapshot and the previous one. Whenever we do a new replication, the oldest snapshot will be deleted and a new one will be created. So we always end up having the two snapshot copies for snap mirror on the destination side in normal operations. The source volume with asynchronous replication does not need to wait for data to be replicated to the destination volume before sending an acknowledgement to the client. It's going to send it back immediately. So because of that, there's no distance or round trip time limitation for asynchronous DP mirrors. Obviously, if you do have a huge distance between the source and the destination volumes, you don't want to be replicating too frequently. You do need to make sure that there's enough time between replications for all the data to be replicated across. 
Last thing to tell you about here is tape seeding, which can help with that initial baseline transfer. Incremental updates of snapshot copies from the source to the destination are feasible over a low bandwidth network connection. However, the initial baseline replication can take a long time, especially if you've got a low bandwidth connection between the two sites. A way you can help with that is with tape seeding. You can perform a local backup of the source volume to a tape and then physically ship it to the destination. The mirror baseline initialization is performed by restoring from the tape at the destination cluster. So you back up the tape in the physical source site, you then physically ship that tape over to the destination site, and then you do a restore from the tape at the destination side to do that initial baseline transfer. Tape seeding is supported for both DP mirrors and for snapball. So this is optional, if the network bandwidth is not a concern, or if, for example, you create the snap mirror relationship at the same time as you create the source volume, so it's brand new, you don't have anything in it, obviously you wouldn't need to do tape seeding in that situation. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.